Hey, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about stuff. So remember how in the beginning of the year I told you that I was going to be changing some of my investment strategies to focus on other things? Well, part of the problem is, is I realized that I, not that I can't, but I really won't be able to stick to that as much as I would like to, uh, simply because I'm really into NFTs. I'm not sure if you've seen the channel before or watched the other channel, uh, NFTs, for those of you who missed it over the course of the last couple of months, uh, have re-risen. They were never really gone. It's more that people kind of, uh, people who got into them for the hype actually left the market, but everyone else was still in the market for a very long time. So basically, I've been rebuying tons of NFTs. I thought I would be able to take an entire year off from not buying them, but that didn't, I mean, it lasted like maybe three and a half weeks. I was like constantly scouring websites, uh, mainly OpenSea and Vivi, and it didn't last for that long. So anyway, uh, this is what I'm buying this week or what I'm going to be buying uh, mainly on Vivi because there's a lot of really interesting stuff that they've been putting onto the website. Uh, for those of you who missed it, I mentioned in one of the other last videos, Vivi originally was doing uh, edition sizes of 60,000 because there were so many people on the app. They were trying to make it readily available to everyone. The 60,000 editions dropped to 30,000 and then to 10,000, and now they're roughly between 7,500 and 10,000 for any new comic book releases. The issue here is is that they've only been releasing like really good comics as of late so uh yeah the first thing i'm going to be buying this should come as absolutely no surprise to anyone is actually the amazing spider-man number one uh simply because me personally um while i do have some amazing fantasy 15s I feel like the price point on Amazing Spider-Man number one is far more digestible, if you will. It's constantly fluctuating between $20 to $24, and I think that is excessively undervalued, especially from as high as where it went before, and now there's barely any left on the website. An app, I don't remember how many I have. I think it's almost 40 or something like that of these. I'm trying to get every single rarity except for the uh, secret rare, which is a little bit pricey at the moment. So normally people do ask me which rarities am I buying? I try to buy every rarity if I can, but I tend to focus on the commons and the uncommons and sometimes around the rares just because I feel like they have a much value higher value proposition than some of the larger uh, priced ones out there. So Amazing Spider-Man number one, don't have to even go over it. It's just more of a, this comic book is huge. It will always be huge, especially as the comic book gets older and all that other kind of stuff. Uh, number two is going to be the Amazing Spider-Man number two. I was very shocked when they dropped this on the app as well. It's the first appearance of the Vulture. Uh, for some reason, we nearly have all the uh, main first appearances of Spider-Man's like most popular uh, villains on the app and being issue number two, it's also worth a lot in the real world, not extravagantly as much as Amazing Spider-Man number one, but alas, it's still roughly somewhere uh, in the very high five digits if you look around for prices. Um, I've seen this go as low as around like $10. I think the edition size is around 7,500. It's almost laughable that there's still any left on the app and or website. So I will be buying some and will continue to be buying some until the price is roughly around, I wanna say $35 for each. Same exact thing for Amazing Spider-Man number one. Like I have a price in my head, as many as I'll continue to buy as long as it is below a certain amount. It's not that it's not worth it. Above 35, it's more of a, I would simply just find something else that's also extremely cheap at that point, like I always tend to do. If you've been following the pattern, number three is Amazing Spider-Man number four. Not number three, it's the first appearance of the Sandman. It's actually one of my, one of my uh, favorite comics of all time, I don't know why. Uh, I find Sandman interesting, but alas, for some reason, I must have something happened when I was a child. I'm attached to this book. Uh, also, 
floating around $10 to $12. Not really sure why it's so cheap. Tons of people are actually buying a lot of them every time I do check the website or the app. Usually in the mornings, I see another huge chunk of them has been taken off of the uh, platform as well. I will also be picking this up. It's basically one of the most popular Amazing Spider-Man early 1960s books that there are out there. And the first four are already on Vivi, which I find completely insane. Amazing Spider-Man number one, first uh, second Spider-Man, and first J. Jonah Jameson. Amazing Spider-Man number two, first Vulture. Amazing Spider-Man number three, first Doctor Octopus has been on there for a while when the last Spider-Man movie came out. And Amazing Spider-Man number four, the first appearance of the Sandman. And the only other really early significant book out of the first run that came out that's already on there is Amazing Spider-Man number 14, the first appearance of the Green Goblin, which has also already been on VV, and sometimes that drops down to like $5. The uh, minting price is, I think is $6. So people are selling it even below the minting price, and whenever I see it go below the minting price, I always buy a lot of those as well. It's the first Green Goblin, and there's barely once again any left on the actual app. It's just completely a no-brainer for me, at least from my perspective when it comes to investing. Number four, um, Amazing Spider-Man number, no, I'm, I'm joking. There's, <laughs> that was the definitely the last one because I am now focusing on the earlier numbers simply because these are the more valuable ones in the real world. Number four is Fantastic Four number 52. This is the first appearance of the Black Panther. I don't know if you know, but Black Panther is an incredibly popular character. Has been, I want to say, since the early 2000s. He began to kind of pick back up. He was using random stories. He got another version of his own series in the early 90s or something like that. It was kind of popular. First appearance of the Dora Milaje, which is also on VV as well. But his actual first appearance was also released on VV. And I found it very interesting that the amount of hype that I assumed that there would have been for this comic on the release uh, had kind of subsided because the movie, the newer movie, had already been released and I think that people were waiting for it to be released when the movie first came out. That is to say Black Panther Part 2, uh, which is incredible if you have not seen it. I'm not sure if you've seen that movie, but it is uh, worth a watch without spoiling it. There's a lot of really good things and I hope that some of the characters uh, translate eventually into comic books as well. Uh, this book is huge, both in, in physical and digital form. I can't stress it. I even love the variants that Vivi released for it. Like they kept it true to the actual homage, like the original covers that you normally see for the common and the uncommons. A lot of times the rares and ultra rares, while I am not knocking one, anyone's art, it's more of a, I like to see the original art for something. It makes a lot of sense in my mind to associate the original art with it. And the rares and ultra rares for this one are the actual, like it's a, a newer spin uh, on the older uh, issues. And also the secret rare is also really good. It's the first panel inside. If you have the actual comic book and you open it up, it's the first panel that appears. It's a gigantic Black Panther like menacingly looking down on the Fantastic Four. And I just think it's absolutely fantastic. So uh, no number in my head as to how many of these that I'm going to try and get. Um, I have procured already a common, uncommon, and a rare. I think I may try and get an ultra rare just to have one for the like long-term collection. Uh, but as far as the common and the uncommon, I'm probably going to be trying to get at least 50 of them, especially if the price ends up dipping at any point. There's a lot of new releases that are going to be happening on the VV app and they've announced some really big things are gonna be coming up. So here's the trick for those of you who don't know it. If you happen to have your eye on something, uh, wait for another really big release because what ends up happening is people end up selling tons of the other things because they no longer have the luster and the shine if you will. But by the time something new is coming out, that's the brand new shiny thing that everyone wants to acquire. People end up selling their old stuff for crazy low prices, and then they only buy the new stuff, which causes that price to rise, the prices of everything else ends up falling down for a tiny bit, and that's a time for you to actually acquire stuff. It works all the time. It happens for every single thing. It happened when I was waiting for people to sell off their um, ultimate fallouts, and for them to sell off uh, 
all the uh, Ron English stuff. If you've been paying attention, all the, the little Ron English little figures and monsters and all the cereal people, uh, some of them fell down to like $9 and there were like 16 left on the market. So I was like, you know. Anyway, yeah, I, not that I tried to stay away from Vivi, it was more like, I'm going to do other things when it comes to investing this year. And I realize I can do both, but it's more of a, I, the liquidity of NFTs is one of the main driving factors. Like, no one knows if any of these experiments with NFTs or even cryptocurrencies are going to last forever or for the next 50 years. But when it comes to acquiring and selling an NFT, the speed at which you can do it without actually having to, like I said before, package it up, hope that it gets somewhere, hope that the person doesn't ask for a refund because the comic is slightly bent, it is a major driver in me uh, investing in these things. And yeah, I think the market will only continue to get bigger. I hope that you've all enjoyed. Hope that you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. Do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or subscribing and supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you all.